My name is Alexandria, and this is Michael, and today we're making Detroit-style pizza. Welcome to The Full Measure. Welcome to The Full Measure. If you've never seen our show before, we like to make a dish in two ways. The first way we make it is pretty simple and we try to add a little bit to it to make it a little bit better. We call that the half measure. The second way we make it, we go all out. It's usually from scratch or you know whatever it is, it takes a lot more time and effort and we call that the full measure. At the end of the episode, we let you know whether going the full measure was worth all of the time and the effort. And today, we are making Detroit style pizza. Have you ever had Detroit style pizza? No, I didn't even. No, it was a thing. I think there's a lot of people that will be surprised to find out that Detroit style pizza is a thing at all. Not that people haven't had Detroit style pizza before. I bet it's just because they didn't know that it was a thing. But Detroit style pizza is usually a pretty thick crusted pizza. And something that's really characteristic of it is that the edges have deeply browned, like crispy cheese wall. But, yeah. but the edges are like... Up. It's not just like a normal flat crust, right? No, it's like, in it because it's baked in a very deep dish. Little Caesars deep dish is very similar to Detroit style pizza. The half measure of Detroit style pizza today is a frozen Detroit style pizza. To make that a little bit better, we're just gonna add some fresh ingredients to it. And then the full measure, we'll make everything from scratch. We'll make the whole pizza from scratch. I'm excited about both. And I'm excited about that, that crust. Yeah, the crunchy cheese. <laughs> Let's make the half measure Detroit-style pizza. All right. For the half measure today, we were lucky enough to find this, a Detroit-style frozen pizza. It's from Outsiders, and it was just at the local supermarket. It comes in a little tray. That's a good sign. It has plenty of pepperoni, another great sign, and it says it's made with brick cheese, the specific cheese used on Detroit-style pizzas. One of my favorite pastimes of a frozen pizza is redistributing the pepperoni. Don't know why. I've done this since I was a kid, and it's likely an early warning sign of my obsessiveness. You can also game the system and usually score one or two extra pepperoni for snacking. This half measure needs a little bit more measure. Let's add some fresh ingredients to take a little bit of that frozen food edge off. I like bell peppers, tomatoes, and onion. This onion is even left over from another night of cooking. Good way to use up odds and ends. Tomato may seem a little redundant, but this is honestly one of my all-time favorite pizza toppings. Let's give these a quick chop and add them to the top of the pizza. This particular pie needs to be in a 400 degree oven for about 28 minutes. The tray is vital to helping us get that iconic cheese edge that is quintessential Detroit style pizza. Another marquee is the pepperoni that cups up like this. Good on you outsiders, you know your Detroit pizza. Overall, this is a pretty top shelf pizza for something that came out of the freezer section at the grocery store. The pepperoni look incredible. We did get a little bit of that edge cheese. The crust looks nice and soft. Overall, I'd say this is pretty great for frozen pizza. It's a little more expensive than other options at $9, but I'd say it's still a pretty solid price for something that seems like it could be really good. So let's find out and give it a taste. Here we are, Detroit style frozen pizza. Okay. We did okay. Um, some of the edges got a little like crispity crunchity. That's what we want though. Yeah, yeah, you want like dark cheese. Um, you know, I'm not like super impressed, but it looks better than I would expect a frozen pizza to look. So I wouldn't know what to expect, so if I bought this at the store, I'd be like, cool, yeah, sure. Great. Yeah, that's um, fair, that's a good point. I really like pepperoni cups. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take a piece of the fresh tomato I think it's really good for a frozen pizza. Not like what I would expect from a frozen pizza because it's so like the, fluffy. The dough is really good and fluffy and that's another characteristic trait of Detroit style pizza is that the dough is like very airy. When we make the full measure one, you'll see that it comes from a very high hydration dough and that's where that airy fluffiness comes yeah. from. I think really good for a frozen pizza. Like this is as good as like a Little Caesars. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit better than a Little Caesars. When I got a bite of that bell pepper in there, totally different taste. It helps. Yeah, it just makes it like a little brighter, a little fresher. Yeah, I mean. I and it masks that like freezer, like frozen pizza taste right. a little bit. This has really great textures. The main pizza part is really fluffy mm -hmm. and kind of soft rather than like a frozen pizza where it's just very like cardboardy or even like too flimsy. This is a really solid frozen pizza. Yeah, and then that crunchy edge is nice. I'm excited to have that on like that. It's a really good frozen pizza, but I think getting a really solid Detroit style pizza at home is not gonna be that difficult. I'm really excited to try the full measure one. Me too. Let's try that one. All right. The full measure Detroit style pizza starts with our own dough. 
Like most dough recipes, this one is very simple, four ingredients. We will be following J. Kenji Lopez Alt's entire Detroit style pizza recipe today. I also wanna talk about the weights I typically list out on recipes and also the metric units that I've been using. Let's start with the metric units. The US is literally one of three countries in the entire world not using metric and it's much more simple and it's very handy in the kitchen. If you don't like the metric system, I'm not here to ridicule you or make fun of you, but I am here to give you links. There's a link in the description that'll help you take your first steps into using a much easier measurement system in your kitchen. Second, the weights rather than cup measurements. This is especially important with baking and making dough. This kitchen scale literally costs $13.96. I use it every single day. It's 1000% worth the investment and it isn't some elitist kitchen tool or something that's overly complicated. It's very simple. It's a vital tool and everyone should have one in their kitchen. Again, not here to ridicule, hoping to help you cook better, that's all. I wanted to show you why the scale is important in making dough especially. This recipe calls for 300 grams of flour or two generous cups. This is 300 grams of flour measured out on the scale. And this is two generous cups, which you can't really see, but it came out to 327 grams. This is about 8% more flour than is called for. Those things really matter when you're making dough, especially when you're making dough like we are today and you're looking for a very specific amount of hydration. This is why using a scale is so important. For the dough, add 300 grams of bread flour, five grams of instant yeast, and nine grams of kosher salt to the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with a dough hook. Mix to combine all of your dry ingredients and then add 220 grams of water. Mix this on low for two minutes or until a shaggy dough forms. This is pretty much what a shaggy dough looks like. Once it looks like this, stop the mixer and let it sit for 10 minutes undisturbed. After your 10 minutes are up, continue mixing at a medium low speed for 10 minutes. Knead until a soft and silky dough is formed. None of this has to be done in a stand mixer. You could easily do all of the same stuff by hand. Remove the dough from the hook and form a tight ball. It helps to move your hands quickly and deliberately. The high amount of water in this dough makes it pretty sticky and slack. Place the dough in a grease bowl and cover in plastic. It doesn't have to be tight enough to be a drum, but if you're gonna make a drum, you may as well play the drum. Let the dough rise for two hours or until doubled in size. As we make the sauce, it's a good time to preheat your oven to 550 degrees Fahrenheit or as high as it'll go and set the rack to the lowest position. We'll need that later. To make the sauce, start with about two tablespoons of olive oil in a pan over medium heat. Wait until the oil is shimmering to add three cloves of garlic, two teaspoons of dried oregano, and a dash of red pepper flakes. The red pepper add a minimal amount of heat. Think of this more as a background or a base flavor to the sauce. Stir these around and cook for about 30 seconds. Then add a 28 ounce can of high quality crushed tomatoes. I like San Marzano. Add one teaspoon of each onion powder, granulated garlic, and sugar. Stir this to combine everything. Bring this to a simmer with a few bubbles here and there and let it cook for about 30 minutes. It'll reduce quite a bit and become much thicker. Before you're finished, add kosher salt and taste for seasoning. The requisite cheese for true Detroit style pizza is called brick cheese. So called because it comes in a literal brick. It's an American-made cheese through and through, but it's not American cheese. It was originally made in Wisconsin and is very mild and has a medium softness. Perfect for melting, perfect for pizza. We will cut these into cubes of about one half inch or one and a half centimeters, and we need about 12 ounces or 340 grams. In the research I did for this episode, I kept having people tell me to use way more cheese than I think I would need. Kenji's recipe calls for 12 ounces, and we're gonna use 12 ounces. The last item to prep is the pepperoni. You could obviously add anything you'd like, but I think of the Detroit style pizza as a working class pizza, and I wanted to keep it as straightforward as possible. The pepperoni cups are also key. This brings me to the reason why I settled on J. Kenji Lopez Alt's recipe. I found it because he was scientifically breaking down how those cups are formed in an article. I'm not kidding, there were calipers involved. He even has a video of a 3D simulation of what causes the cups. It's a great read, and I'll link it in the description. To paraphrase the article, the best way to get the cups comes down to the casing. You need a natural or a collagen case pepperoni. Believe it or not, the Hormel stuff at the grocery store has a collagen casing, if you buy the links and not the pre-sliced kind. I got both because the links are a little small and I just wanted to put it to the test. There are plenty of high quality pepperoni available with natural casing, but this is the best I could find this week. I'll use the pre-cut stuff under the cheese and the cups up top. All you have to do is slice the pepperoni thin, but not paper thin. You should only need about one of the links for this pie. Finally, it's time to assemble this pizza. But we do have to pause for a second. Let's get that hold music going. Yeah, there we go. The most important part of a Detroit style pizza is likely not the pizza or the ingredients at all, but the pan that it's cooked in. Detroit style pizza was created in 1946 at a place called Buddy Rendezvous by adapting a Sicilian style pizza. The pizzas were actually cooked in auto parts trays that were widely available in Detroit in the 40s. According to the story, some of those 50 to 75 year old pans are still in use today. This is my new auto parts pan. 
Well, it's a pizza pan that I got from DetroitStylePizza.com. It came pre-seasoned and ready to go. It's very deep and very sturdy. It's made of steel. You don't have to get this authentic with it, but you do need deep walls and something sturdy. This cost around $30, so I thought it was worth the investment. Now that we have our pan, let's build this thing. To start, use about one to two tablespoons of olive oil in the pan and work it over every surface with your hands. Place the now doubled dough into the pan and work it into every corner. It helps to keep the oil on your hands. This dough is very sticky. As you're working the dough, it may want to spring back. If so, poke some of the air out and let it rest for five to 10 minutes. It should be good after that. Once the dough is worked over the entire pan, we start with a layer of pepperoni. You don't need a ton. After that, we add all of the brick cheese. Make sure it's spread out evenly, but especially concentrated along the edges. Next, your pepperoni or whatever you choose as a topping. And and last, you'll need three stripes of sauce. Yes, the sauce is on top. No, it doesn't turn out like a Chicago style pizza. Because we have the cheese in cubes and spread out, the sauce melts down into the cheese. There will be some sauce on top, but it all boils into a pleasant magma of pizza topping in the end. Also, people really gotta stop complaining about sauce on top of a pizza. Those of us that like it don't really care, and I like all pizza. That's it, your pie is ready to go. Place this on the bottom rack of your preheated oven and bake for 12 to 15 minutes or until you see the top starting to look golden. Blamo, a Detroit style pizza. Pizza. Look at that thing. No, actually listen to that thing. It's a true beauty. Take a thin spatula along the outside and free the baked on cheese. Then lift the pizza out of the pan and onto a cutting board. Slice and serve. This is a truly special pizza. The bread is pillowy soft. The cheese is gooey and rich. Pepperoni crisps up so nicely. And the cheese along the edge is just a real treat to top it all off. Don't plan to eat more than one or two of these slices, but it is divine. I have a lot more to say about this pizza. So let's give it a taste. Make me pizza. I made you pizza. Detroit style pizza. All right. You see what I mean about the edge? Yeah, nice and crispy. It's like and way more dark and crispy and crunchy. And the cheese basically fries on the outside of the pan. These are, these are cooling down fast. So I want to take okay. a bite and then we'll keep talking. That's way better. <laughs> Ooh, you know what's really funny is it's really reminiscent of like how my grandmother used to make. It's really like yeasty and bready. Yeah, I think that's what's great about this one is like if you're gonna have a bready pizza, this is what you want. The other one was kind of like. It was the balance wasn't there. It was unbalanced. Yeah, go for it. Let's have another bite. That's good. I think it's so incredibly deserving of its own style. This yeah. is not like New York style pizza. No. This is not close to Chicago style pizza. This is Detroit's thing. Like, and it's a cool, very unique type of pizza to have. Now that you've had this and you know what Detroit style pizza is, do you think you've probably had Detroit style in the past? Yes, like this feels somewhat familiar. I don't think it's anything I've had like on a regular basis by any means. You gotta like it's bread good. to oh. like this. Like this, this pizza is about the, the bread. What's that called? The bubbles in the dough? Oh, the crumb? Yeah. The crumb of the bread, the crumb yeah. crumb is really good. <laughs> Looking like that, that really open crumb comes from the fact that it's a really high hydration dough. It's I so feel like you don't normally see that on pizza. Like, yeah, that's a good I, point. When I think of, I mean like, yeah, you have like the the visual of like people throwing up the dough and stuff, but you don't think of it as like a bread. This is like, this is a that's bread. A, that's a slice of bread that there's there's some pizza on top of. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, there's so many textures. How often do you get to have like multiple textures in a pizza? Yeah, I, I do really like doughy mm -hmm. texture. The bottom, it becomes like just dense. Crust. The middle is bread, like fluffy yeah. bread. The outside <laughs> is that charred fried cheese. All three of those together. It's like a whole bunch of textures going on in one bite. It's it's pretty cool for, pe like for pizza to be that texturally complex. Yeah, because I feel like normally when you have pizza, it's like this much of kind of all one texture and then you get to yeah. the crust. I don't know that you could cook this on just a normal weeknight. The dough has to rise for two hours, but this is like a knock out of the park for it's, it's really good. a weekend, like have fun at home. If you can find yeast right now, I know yeast is really tough to get a hold of. If you don't have a Detroit style pan, you could split this in half and do it in like two nine by nine, like brownie or cake pans. Oh yeah. You wouldn't want to do it in the little like short, thin baking sheets because the walls are not high enough. But if you did it in a cake pan, like it, it would be smaller but you would have the same product. Let's see how Detroit style pizza ranks on our chart of worthiness.
As a lot of you know by now, this is our chart of worthiness, where we measure how much effort goes into a dish versus how much payoff you get. The frozen Detroit style pizza was actually really, really good for frozen pizza. Adding fresh veggies and fresh toppings is a really great way to make a frozen pizza taste even better. The full measure Detroit style pizza was absolutely excellent. And honestly, it wasn't that difficult to make. Not something you'd want to make on a weeknight, but it's definitely worth the challenge. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you can check out some of our other videos as well. All of the information about this recipe and all all of the recipes we've made on our website, fullmeasureshow.com. If you make this pizza or if you make anything that we've made, please tag us. We're on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Post a photo of it and tag us in your photos. We love seeing that. That's like one of our favorite things. We have a Patreon as well. We just passed a thousand subscribers on YouTube. We are currently trying to figure out what to do to celebrate when we pass 5,000 subscribers, which that's probably a little ways in the future. So we're still brainstorming on that. Leave a comment below if you know what we should make to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. Give us some ideas. Also leave a comment below if you have something you'd like to suggest that we'd make on the show. Cake? Oh, I haven't thought about it. Cake is a good one. I strayed away from the sweet stuff because we were so sweets heavy the first couple of episodes. Someone's birthday is coming up. He can make his own cake. If you click subscribe, we'll start to be in your regular YouTube feed and that way you don't have to rely on YouTube's algorithm to show you our next video. You'll just get it in your feed automatically. Um, and for those of you who are watching who are not subscribed yet, welcome to the channel and hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Again, thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you on the next one. Yes. Yes? Yes, bye. Make the full measure one that it comes from a very high hydration joke, high hydration, very high hydration joke. That's really hard to say. <laughs> Do you want me to say it? No.